Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to talk about transgenic plants, which you know are the genetically modified wonders that have been making waves in the field of agriculture. So let's start. Now, um, with the 21st century, it has thrown a very big challenge at us, which is to produce enough food that can be fed to the growing population. So this is a matter of concern. With the global population on the rise, the crop improvement has become the ultimate mission by which the production goals can be met. So there are constant efforts being made to find ways to grow more food, and that's where the transgenesis process comes into play. So this is a continuing uh, challenge, and we are going to discuss that how transgenesis can be one of the ways with which we can meet the production goals. Now, before we actually move on to the uh, transgenesis process, we must first try to understand the available methods which are into use since a very long time. So let's rewind a little bit. In the past, we've tried boosting the crop yields through the green revolution. So this green revolution basically involved uh, the agrochemical based agriculture, which is a current scenario as well. So this green revolution basically led to the adoption of new technologies where we basically grew high yielding varieties of the cereals. And this process, this whole agrochemical based agriculture was associated with the use of fertilizers, agrochemicals and better management of the crops. And due to this revolution, the crop production tripled. So this has been a very important uh, technique in the field of agriculture. But there are certain limitations to this thing because of the sophistication that is needed for the application of the different agrochemicals to produce the quantities to multiple uh, levels. This is not going to be the ultimate idea of uh, feeding the population in the longer run. So also the agrochemicals are very expensive and they can be polluting to the soil and food. So we have to look out for something else. The next idea that comes is the organic farming, which is also a way of improving the crops. It's all about being kind to the planet. Well, this uses natural manures, biofertilizers, biopesticides, and biocontrol agents. But it's like trying to save the day without all the cool gadgets. So you see, the limitation is that it cannot increase the crop yield to a significant level in a little time. It can definitely help in improving the crops over the period of time, but because we have to produce uh, the amount of the crops in a shorter period of time so that more food can be produced and fed to a larger population in this growing world. Now comes the concept of genetically modified organisms, and here we are going to specifically talk about the crops that have been genetically modified. So there are several different advantages to this technique. Well, the most important one is the need of the hour. That is, it takes less time to produce the genetically modified crops. And any gene from any organism can be excised and it can be introduced into the crops. So we are talking about the increased productivity, better nutrition, and a lot of other factors. Now, because as I previously mentioned that there is a need to raise the agricultural productivity to deal with the problems of the poverty and food insecurity, the genetic engineering becomes one of the techniques which can possibly um, increase the production at low costs and where the desired traits can be speedily introduced into the host plants. Now, what are the benefits of transgenesis? So there is an increased crop productivity that is linked to this. There is an improved nutritional content. For example, if you talk about the golden rice, uh, in which there has been a gene incorporated, which leads to the production of vitamin A in it. We have enhanced crop production, better flavor and fresher produce, such as the flower sour tomatoes, which you might have uh, read about somewhere. Then we have environmental protection, which means that the plants can be introduced with traits which can lead to drought resistance, rainfall resistance, and better, um, better traits which can help it survive into the harsh climate as well. And there is a delayed fruit ripening. 
and also this is a, a method by which the developing countries can benefit a lot now let's just see that what exactly is the process by which the transgenesis process takes place like how the transgenic plants are being produced so there are basically these steps that are involved in the transgenic plants so we are going to discuss about that by using this figure so scientists first of all identify and extract the specific gene that they want to insert in the plant for example let's say there is a plant and you want to introduce pesticide resistance in it so there will be certain gene from another plant which confers the pesticide resistance in the plant it will be taken out excised from the uh, mother plant and then this will undergo a process of transgenesis and then this gene can be integrated into the host plant where this resistance needs to be introduced how this takes place is via these steps so the first step is isolation of a gene which needs to be inserted so first you have to identify and extract the specific gene and which you want to introduce into the plant this gene is like the blueprint for the special trait that you want to have uh, in the desired plant it can be anything it can be resistance to the pests maybe improve nutritional content or any other different trait now the second thing is inserting the gene into a vector now there needs to be certain mechanism by which this gene can be introduced into the host plant so this is done via a shuttle service basically which is done by a specific component known as a vector now uh this is this vector is a delivery agent and this vector is responsible for carrying the desirable gene from the uh mother plant to the target cell so this step is basically the insertion of the gene into the vector so this vector it can be anything it can be a plasmid or maybe a virus engineered to carry our gene of interest and this combination basically uh creates a genetic package which is ready to be delivered to the host plant now the most commonly and widely used vector in the plant systems is this ti plasmid which is known as the tumor induced plasmid and this is obtained from the bacterium agrobacterium tumefaciens this plasmid is also called the natural genetic engineer and it is responsible for delivering the genes into the target cell there is this specific region in this uh, ti plasmid known as the tdna where there is a site into which the desirable gene can be integrated and further it can be transferred to the host plant cell i will discuss about this plasmid in more detail in the coming lectures however after uh, you have decided that what gene has to be integrated into the ti plasmid which is a vector this is the step so you see the red color here this is the desirable gene right so this has been integrated into the tdna region of the ti plasmid now after this gene has been integrated into the plasmid this is now called the recombinant ti plasmid now the next step is insertion of the vector into the host cell so this can be done by different methods such as gene guns or maybe bacterial trans uh, uh, bacterial infection so introduction of this ti plasmid happens into the plant cell now this plant cell is the target cell which is the plant into which we want to integrate the trait which is carried in this red colored gene so after this uh, gene has been integrated into the genome of the plant cell there is a regeneration of the plant and now this plant grows up having the new trait which we wanted to integrate into it now that our gene is inside the host it has to be multiplied so that the trait finally starts to appear in the plant which is what i was talking about so the various cloning techniques are used to make the copies of the genetically modified cells and it's like creating an army of genetically identical plant cells all of which are carrying the desirable gene that we had introduced so there are several techniques which we will be discussing in the coming lectures but for now you understood that the first step is isolating the gene then it is the integration into the vector such as the ti plasmid the next step involves the integration of this gene into the plant genome and finally the regeneration of the plant with the new trait 
so after the uh, this plant has been uh, introduced with the new trait the desired product is extracted it can be anything maybe a protein or an enzyme or some other biochemical so that's what the process of transgenesis looks like in the plant systems so until next time stay curious and keep exploring the different aspects of transgenesis in the coming lectures we will be talking about some of the examples of transgenic plants thank you don't forget to share and like my video thank you